Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. In my previous video, I discussed the effect of insulation on antenna wire, particularly in the high frequency range or for uh, radio amateurs, primarily 160 through 6 meters, dipole antennas, random wire antennas, or similar wire antennas, and expounded on the virtues of copper-clad steel wire. Uh, I appreciate your comments and input on that topic and welcome any ideas, uh, and there's some good ideas in there too, but I just thought of something uh, this morning uh, that it, copper clad steel wire can be very difficult to work with. If you've ever done it, you'll know why. The stuff likes to, well, you'll find out. <laughs> Get some and see. You'll find out that it can be very, very difficult to work with and frustrating. But it doesn't stretch, uh, at least not appreciably, and it has no insulation in most cases. So you don't have to worry about any effects that might have, which are minimal uh, in most people's experience. I think though that there's a very easily available cheap alternative if you can't get a hold of that kind of wire, which also does not stretch and uh, at least not very much and is pretty good, pretty easy to work with. It is insulated wire, and it provides the ideal uh, supply for a dipole antenna, especially a quickie dipole antenna. And that's ordinary electrical zip cord. Uh, it comes in gauges available from roughly AWG number 18 down to AWG number 12, I believe. Uh, you can get it at most any hardware store and uh, if you have plans for a dipole antenna and you know how long you want it to be on each side on each leg of the dipole say a 40 meter dipole might be roughly 33 feet on each side or 10 meters on each side of the center insulator well you cut a little extra slack for yourself get maybe 35 feet of AWG number 14 or number 12 electrical zip cord. Get, uh, say, 12 meters of that, 10, 11 or 12 meters of that. Uh, cut it off, you know, they have it in rolls in the hardware store, just measure it and cut it off. For your center insulator, you can get away with what they call an egg insulator or the kind where one wire loops through, it's, it's shaped like a donut, some of them, the most easily available ones, they're made out of porcelain. They, uh, they're, they're also called strain insulators because if they break, the antenna won't fall. Uh, they're shaped like a donut and, they, and you can wrap one wire around the outside with a little groove in it and then wrap the other wire through the center hole. They do tend to exhibit quite a lot of capacitance between the wires of the antenna, so you're better off uh, uh, just because of the nature of the construction. The wires form two loops that come close together and you'll have some capacitance there. Therefore, it's best to use it for half-wave uh, dipoles, uh, dipoles that are resonant with a relatively low feed point impedance on the order of 75 ohms. Just say a a 66 foot long from end to end or 33 feet on each leg, 40 meter dipole with a strain insulator at the center and you can get a couple of strain insulators and put them at the ends and then use non-stretch nylon rope for uh, the extension to go wherever you want it to go. I still would advise against uh, putting that antenna, fastening it to anything that might sway, such as a tree, a, a small tree, a big tree, maybe not. Uh, but uh, you can figure it out. Uh, don't use twine, because we've been talking about rodents, 
uh, rodents have a way of chewing through twine. <laughs> uh, squirrels, chipmunks, things like that. They're not quite so fond of nylon rope. And uh, so you can also use more regular wire. Uh, it's easy to work with stranded wire. It's stranded copper wire. And the fact that it's stranded makes it flexible, easy to work with, and, has a, and resistant to stretching. Although once you get past a certain point, it'll break. It doesn't have very good tensile strength. But that's a good uh, choice for a quickie dipole if you need to get an antenna up in a hurry and you can feed it directly with 50 ohm or 75 ohm coaxial cable. It's best if you use a one-to-one -one ballon at the center, but you don't have to. You can get on the air without one. If you want to wind a choke ballon at the, uh, at the feed point, you just coil the wire up, wire it around, uh, you know, make a, make a coil, tape it together with electrical tape, maybe 20 or 30 turns of that, of that cable, or, and uh, it can be a, a foot in diameter or so, but you don't need to do that. Just connect the cables, make sure the solder connections are good, and stranded wire takes very well to solder. Uh, you don't necessarily need to cover it with insulating tape like electrical tape, but I would recommend that. Uh, you can kind of get the picture. But stranded wire is a good substitute for copper clad steel wire, and I'm talking about stranded copper wire. It does have insulation, but I wouldn't worry about that. I'd just cut it until it's resonant according to your standing wave ratio meter. Uh, you can also feed it with open wire line and use a, a balanced antenna tuner at the uh, transmitter input. That'll work fine too. Uh, just a, a little cheaper alternative and a little less frustrating than that springy copper clad steel stuff which can drive you out of your mind after a certain length of time and can also be rather dangerous if it recoils at you and the sharp end happens to find your eye. So wear safety glasses if you work with copper clad steel wire. Oh, just some rantings and ramblings about antennas from W1GV saying 73 and so long, which, regardless of antenna type, in my native fist, always translates to da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs>